Why and how UK will collapse in political crisis? The new British government is off to a very rocky start after stumbling through an economic and financial crisis of its own making. Just a few weeks into its term on September 23, 2022, Prime Minister Liz Truss government released a so-called mini-budget that proposed £161 billion, about US$184 billion US dollars at today's rate, in new spending and the biggest tax cuts in half a century, with the benefits mainly going to Britain's top earners. The aim was to jumpstart growth in an economy on the verge of recession. But the government didn't indicate how it would pay for it, or provide evidence that the spending and tax cuts would actually work. Financial markets reacted badly, prompting interest rates to soar and the pound to plunge to the lowest level against the dollar since 1985. The Bank of England was forced to gobble up government bonds to avoid a financial crisis. After days of defending the plan, the government did a U-turn of sorts on October 3. By scrapping the most controversial component of the budget, elimination of its top 45% tax rate on high earners. This calmed markets, leading to a rally in the pound and government bonds. As a finance professor who tracks markets closely, I believe at the heart of this mini-crisis over the mini-budget was a lack of confidence, and now a lack of credibility. A looming recession. Trust government inherited a troubled economy. Growth has been sluggish, with the latest quarterly figure at 0.2%. The Bank of England predicts the UK will soon enter a recession that could last until 2024. The latest data on UK manufacturing shows the sector is contracting. Consumer confidence is at its lowest level ever as soaring inflation, currently at an annualized pace of 9.9%, drives up the cost of living, especially for food and fuel. At the same time, real, inflation-adjusted wages are falling by a record amount, or around 3%. It's important to note that many countries in the world, including the US, and in mainland Europe, are experiencing the same problems of low growth and high inflation. But rumblings in the background in the UK are also other weaknesses. Since the financial crisis of 2008, the UK has suffered from lower productivity compared with other major economies. Business investment plateaued after Brexit in 2016 when a slim majority of voters chose to leave the European Union and remain significantly below pre-COVID-19 levels. And the UK also consistently runs a balance of payments deficit which means the country imports a lot more goods and services than it exports, with a trade deficit of over 5% of gross domestic product. In other words, investors were already predisposed to view the long-term trajectory of the UK economy and the British pound in a negative light. An ambitious agenda. Truss, who became Prime Minister on September 6, 2022, also didn't have a strong start politically. The government of Boris Johnson lost the confidence of his party and the electorate after a series of scandals, including accusations he mishandled sexual abuse allegations and revelations about parties being held in government offices while the country was in lockdown. Truss was not the preferred candidate of lawmakers in her own Conservative Party, who had the task of submitting two choices for the wider party membership to vote on. The rest of the party, dues-paying members of the general public, chose Truss. The lack of support from Conservative members of Parliament meant she wasn't in a position of strength coming into the job. Nonetheless, the new cabinet had an ambitious agenda of cutting taxes and deregulating energy and business. Some of the decisions, laid out in the mini-budget, were expected, such as subsidies limiting higher energy prices, reversing an increase in social security taxes and a planned increase in the corporate tax rate. But others, notably a plan to abolish the 45% tax rate on incomes over £150,000, were not anticipated by markets. 
Since there were no explicit spending cuts cited, funding for the £161 billion package was expected to come from selling more debt. There was also the threat that this would be paid for, in part, by lower welfare payments at a time when poorer Britons are suffering from the soaring cost of living. The fear of welfare cuts is putting more pressure on the trust government. The biggest mistakes the Queen of England has ever made. 1. She was an absent mother. While the Queen was an absent mother, she has certainly tried her best to be there for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. In addition, she now knows that motherhood should have been more important than her royal duties. According to Daily Mail, when the Queen gave Kate Winslet her CBE, she asked the British actress if she liked her job. Winslet replied that she does, but she loves being a mother more. And, without any hesitation, the Queen replied, yes, that's the only job which matters. 2. She was once too distant with the public. In her earlier years as Queen, she kept her distance from the public and felt closed off and cold. That all changed when the Queen switched her annual Christmas broadcast to television, inviting British citizens into her home, by way of the television screen, and slowly paving the way for a more accessible monarchy. 3. She stripped Princess Diana of her HRH title. Following Princess Diana and Prince Charles's divorce, the Queen stripped Princess Diana of her Royal Highness title. Still considered a princess to the public, this left British citizens upset and dumbfounded by the Queen's decision. While it was too late to make up for it, the Queen learned her lesson and showed her respect for the late princess by allowing her coffin to be be covered in the royal standard flag. Then, she did something unexpected. In addition to draping her coffin in the official royal flag, the Queen gave Princess Diana a well-deserved bow a move that both shocked and delighted onlookers. For, she was almost shot by a Buckingham Palace guard, and it was her fault. Another mistake made by the Queen? She almost got herself shot by a Buckingham Palace guard. According to the New York Times, when the Queen can't sleep, she likes to go for a walk around the grounds of Buckingham Palace. That said, she once forgot to tell the Palace guards a mistake that could have cost her life. If you like this video, do subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.